Flosstube and Instagram friends. My name is Kim and this is Flosstube number 34. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome, welcome back. I have a lot of stitching to share with you again today. There are some finishes and new starts. We did take our trip to the attic, so there's a couple of new charts from there as well as some fabric. Lots of good stitchy chit chat, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, if I could just have a few moments of your time, um, I follow Felicia Ozark Mountain Stitcher on Instagram, and her nephew Josh was in a motorcycle accident, and she's been keeping us updated as to how we can continue to pray for him. So the recent need that Felicia has mentioned is uh, for RN uh, caregivers for Josh to be able to come home. And I asked Felicia for the specific parameters uh, that were necessary, and she sent me this. Um, they live in the Missouri, the state of Missouri, in the Wildwood uh, area. It's around St. Louis. And so if you are an RN, or perhaps you know of someone, um, I just thought I would wanted to get the information out there. And uh, also, you can always come alongside us and uh, pray for Josh and his family. So thank you very much for letting me share that with you. I have one more. Um, let's see, let me find the uh, Anna Omen is one of the finishes that I have. And I came across this wonderful finish by Janet on Instagram. Isn't that beautiful? I'm not sure if she mentions what uh, uh, floss and fabric she used on this one, but this is Leela's studio, Anna Omen. Thank you, Janet. All right, let's go ahead and get started and I will share with you my finishes. So we've got Jesse Watson right over here. This is Hands Across the Sea samplers. And uh, I started this as part of a sal that Barbara, Raspberry Stitcher, started. Um, she's going to be finishing this up in April uh, for her son's birthday. So I stitched Jesse on 40 count. It's Lakeside Linens. Oh, drawn a total blank. <laughs> I've mentioned it before in prior videos. If I think of it, I'll shout it out. Uh, I used all of the DMCs called for, and I did obviously make some changes. Uh, Jesse is in a thrifted frame that I cut down, resized. Um, this is wood, so I was able to lightly sand it and put on a couple of coats of wood stain. Let me get in nice and close for you to see. So she is, I did use the Smyrna crosses instead of the eyelets for the heart here. And I used the diagram that had the um, stitching on Ada for the roof instead of doing the stitches for linen, even though this is on linen. Uh, I had an evening where insomnia was hitting full bore. <laughs> and I just gave up and decided to go and stitch. And so Nisi Lynn kept me company. And at one point she showed her, Jesse Watson, and I just ended up finishing her that evening uh, into the early morning hours. Uh, I noticed that, you know, Carol, I think, Saltbox, Saltbox Stitcher, had mentioned that, uh, th I believe it was, she mentioned these types of stitching uh, here, the trees, the design here, was something that was, you know, no-brainer, very simple. And I had to laugh because I thought, I, I struggle with these for some reason. I don't know if it's because I stitched from the bottom up. Um, you know, that was just more comfortable for me. And I don't know if it was the middle of the night, I, I don't know, but I had to pull out like the one tree I was doing three times, you know, it's symmetrical, it has to be done correctly. So, um, but I'm really happy to have, and I did end up putting, she's been pinned and stretched and I put the backing paper on, this is just scrapbook paper. Um, so I think she came out really, really well. Straw flower, 40 count straw flower, <laughs> my lakeside linens. All righty. So then we had Chrissy Nelson is my next finish. And Chrissy Nelson is Lottie Daw. Um, I made some changes to this as well. I saw this on uh, Hillary Rustic Thread Stitching, uh, showed this and I stitched her on 36 count dark cobblestone by Zweigart. And I pulled the DMCs, they, it's charted, charted for both NPS or NPI and DMC, and I pulled the DMCs and then I just made a conversion to some of the over dyed flosses from there and um, changed around a few things by changing the colors of the birds and some of the uh, border or the band stitching up here. Um, put the scripture in here, the walk by faith. And this is another thrifted frame. 
uh, it was actually a free frame from a friend. It's just an eight by 10. And I have used this same frame before. It's like a red cherry-ish co uh, color. And um, it's got this felt uh, backing on the, you'll see them and, and it's got like the little uh, things that, you know, move to hold your, stitch, to hold your uh, pictures in. And I have, normally I can just pry the backing part off, but you can see, I mean, I sanded and sanded and, uh, the, I think I was joking in my head that this must have been this person's first day at work and they were bound and determined to do an excellent job and use all the glue available to them because I could not get this off. This is as good as I could get it. But once I take the uh, scrap picking paper, I will put a, um, uh, you know, some of the double-sided tape all around the edges and then I will just cut the, back, the scrap picking paper or backing paper to fit and it will cover all of this up. And it's just uh, fit in here nicely. The foam core, it's, it's actually very flush. The foam core um, is cut pretty close so that all I had to do was have enough room to you know, adjust my linen and it's not gonna fall out or anything. And so when I put the backing paper on there, it'll be fine. But um, I think she came out beautifully. So this was one of my uh, hashtag NYE 12 by 12 starts. And I was getting a little bit overwhelmed uh, by how many new starts I was having and how many um, finishes. You know, I, 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 like I said, I, I like, kind of like to keep that balanced. And so I just chose some of them were that were maybe a little bit closer to be able to finish a little faster. And, and this was one of them I chose. And so I was really happy to get that one finished. All right. So then let's go ahead and talk about my, oops, Okay, <laughs> computer did something funny. Let's talk about my next finish. This is Misty from Luminous Fiber Arts and it's My Heart Is Yours Pinky. And this was a PDF download from her website. So I purchased the kits that allow me to be able to do all of the finishing. Um, it comes with the floss and the fabric and all of the uh, extra little accoutrement. And uh, this is my very first you know, like pillow finish that had more than just the front and then the backing. And so I took a lot of time trying to be very careful about cutting the velveteen and, you know, doing all of it following Misty's really, really wonderful instructions. Uh, I think it came out really well. I think Misty's proud of me. So I'm excited to have this finished in time for Valentine's Day. I do have a question for you though. You know, I make pillows just very occasionally. And I notice that sometimes I get a much more indented, um, you know, edge. And so if you know why that is, uh, that would be wonderful to know because, you know, I'm just sewing a straight. Anyway, if you know why sometimes that happens uh, a little bit more than others, let me know. I'm going to cut these, I think, a little bit shorter. But uh, and I have to decide, uh, Missy took like a piece of felt um, and made a big heart on the back to cover up the stitching in the back. I haven't decided what I'm going to put there, a, a bit of lace or a, a bit of felt. But um, at this point, I was just ready to, to stop and, and be excited that I had finished my pillow. Okay, so I do have a number of Valentine. I kind of pulled them from my uh, my house. They were on display in different areas. And so maybe I'll run through those uh, really quickly. Um, this is a freebie. I believe it's Snowflower Diaries. And this was a pillow I made several years ago. So that's nice. I also have the Wordplay the for February. Um, we've got another Misty Purcell. Luminous Fiber Arts, be mine. This is before I um, was able to know how to cut down my frames so that they would fit perfectly. I actually like think this is really cute the way it is, so I don't know that I'll, uh, I thought about maybe, because I have lots of, you know, these are just pinned with the twine and the foam core, um, and I set them on easels or in my tear tray, and I had thought, well, maybe I'll make pillows out of some of these, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think these work just fine. So that is uh, Leela's Studio, Be Mine. And then this is Blackbird Designs, Pledge of Affection. Um, this is just another button company. And I think it's called Lovebird. I actually even tried to get super fancy with the ruching on that. Um, there are pins, I believe, that, that, that say love. I have them in, I actually have them, but I have them in something else. Um, so that came out kind of cute. And let's see. Oh, and I have the, another Blackbird Designs back here is My Dear Hearts. And you can kind of see here, Token of Love, which is Pineberry Lane. I think that's everything that I can see that I have out for Valentine's Day. So let me go ahead and share. I had some more fun finishes. Gosh, I should have mentioned that I actually stitched a drum. <laughs> it's like you might have been thinking you were at the wrong channel if I told you that in the beginning. 
but I made my first drum. So this is from the Sewing Club book, and this was the piece I shared with you that I stitched with my friends April Heirlooms on Instagram and Celeste Creates on YouTube and Instagram, and we stitched this together via Zoom. You know, we started it together as a little bit of a mini retreat piece, and uh, neither none of us had finished it, and our friend Merritt Crawford from the Just Because Buzz invited us to a finishing party, and we had the best time. It was so much fun. I think we all watched Vonna Fiverr's tutorial on how to finish a drum, and we did take the time ahead to do some prep work ahead of time, and um, I had made, you know, like the bottom, and this is an old corduroy blazer that I have had for, you know, 20 plus years. I haven't worn it in 20 years, um, but I just saved it. You never know, and so now was a good time to pull it out, and I just cut pieces off of the sleeve, and I did the bit of vase, uh, the bit of lace to cover a bit. Now, you'll notice I didn't do the border on the top. No reason. That was just me avoiding border stitching. <laughs> and I didn't know how much room to leave. I think I erred on the side of caution. You know, Vonna has, uh, on her tutorial, there's a bit of a distance left at the top and the bottom as well. I, and I think going forward, I'll be a little bit more comfortable. It, I mean, it wasn't super hard to make. It's it's still not a lot of fun for me personally. I, I still don't really enjoy the process, but it, it wasn't, I mean, it, I think it came out pretty nice. This is just polyfill. Um, it's actually an old pillow, decorative pillow that I have, and I'm just pulling all the stuffing out of that and, and using it until I run out. But I think next time I'll be a little bit more, um, I won't be as afraid to get it a little bit closer and I, I'd probably come a little bit closer on the, you know, the top and bottom and just some pins, decorative pins. But I think this came out really, really nice. I was really, um, I was really happy to see that, it, you know, I had such a lovely finish. And I was, I mean, it was a lot of effort and it took a lot of time. So it was nice to see that it came out well. Uh, I also made a pillow. I used the same, um, some more of that uh, corduroy from the, uh, the blazer and decided that I would finish up. This is another one that I stitched with my friend Shelly. It's only stitching. And we did this as a part of a sal. It's also from the Sewing Club book. And this one, I decided to try the ladder stitching. I, sometimes I get that better than others. Um, I think it's about where I start. I don't think I, I, I have to practice. I, I think I have a better idea of what I'm doing. But um, fortunately, that's usually on the bottom, so it's okay. But I made another pillow. Uh, at one point, I thought I'd make, you know, I think I was done for making the pillows for right now. <laughs> Let's see what else we go. Oh, I don't want to lose my finger. Let's see what, what what else I've got to share with you. So I guess next we'll go ahead and talk. We'll talk about my Anna Omen. So this is part of the hashtag Winter Cross Stitch Camp that Sherry Colorado Cross Stitcher has come up with um, for us to enjoy. Uh, just a fun thing for us to do. You post um, on Instagram your beginning supplies, and then if you start and finish it in the month of February, then you've completed the uh, challenge successfully, and it's to pick a piece that is all one color. So I knew that I was going to stitch only the bird. Um, th that has always kind of been my idea. Um, both April and Celeste have actually stitched uh, Anna and, and done her in her ent entirety, and she's beautiful. Um, but I, like I said, I already knew that was all I was gonna do was just stitch the bird. And my friend Misty actually has come up with a wonderful hashtag that is very applicable for me specifically. I'm only, hashtag I'm only stitching the bird and I love that. So you will see that on my Instagram from time to time. Now I stole this frame from another piece that uh, I specifically want to keep it for the other one. Um, but I think she looks really, uh, it fits perfectly. And this is a standard size uh, frame that I have found with lots of decor pieces in it. I know uh, I just painted it um, like the black, flat black, and then that decor wax on top of it. And it gives me this nice color, but she fits in here perfectly. So I'll just keep my eyes open for more in the future. So she, right now she's just kind of popped in there, but uh, Anna Omen, uh, and I stitched her, oh, let me, when I find, oh, I did. Hold on, I put the floss in the back here. I stitched her with silk, Cranberry Cocktail by Dinky Dyes. And this is 36 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. So, you know, one color, one strand, a 36 count this was so easy to stitch um it just went really really fast so I, this was a lot of fun for me I don't typically I don't know if I can describe this very well but you know if I had to skip a stitch I would usually go as far as I can go and then um stitch back and then drop down and 
I didn't mind crossing over, you know, like I would stitch, 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 cross over, keep stitching just so I didn't get lost on this design and then go all the way back, drop down and go all the way across and all the way back. And because it was, um, you know, 36 count and, and I just didn't have to worry about blocking my holes where uh, on, a, on a higher count fabric, it, I, I probably wouldn't have done that because I might have had a harder time getting my floss to come up some of those holes. But I, I hope that made sense. Um, probably not, <laughs> but this was very easy for me to stitch the way I decided to stitch it and it came out beautifully. So that's my Anna Omen. Let's see if I can set her back here. Um, I also did a couple of reframing um, of the thrifted frames, cutting them down. I've talked about that. I have a video up about how I do that and I don't know if I can reach them. Let's see. This is, um, let, this would be a good example because someone asked me how I, this is plastic, and how I affix, you know, I can't use glazing points or, you know, your point driver to keep your piece in there. But this fits, again, very flush uh, with the edge. And um, what I will do sometimes if there's a more of a, so say your rabbit is a little deeper, right? And you have, this is, um, there's, it's not flush. If it's not flush, I will save my scraps of my foam core. And you can often, if you cut it the exact width, and uh, so it wedges in to the back of your frame on the, on the sides, it will hold your piece in sufficiently enough for then you to just put the um, scrap of paper on the back to keep it in. So uh, again, I don't worry too much about um, it falling out. It's gonna be on the wall and it's not, it doesn't have glass, it's not super heavy, you know, it's just plastic. So that's sometimes how I will wedge something a little bit more uh, tightly. It's just by putting an extra piece of foam core. Uh, in there to uh, to keep it in place. But um, I just cut this one up yesterday and glued it together and popped this in here very quickly. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do anything, you know, paint it, stain it. I haven't done anything to it. Um, I just, I thought it was a, it was a dollar fifty, So I figured it would be useful for something. And this is Peaceful Dove by Karen Kluba or um, Rosewood Manor. I stitched this quite a while ago, quite, quite a few numbers. I mean, you know, 2017 or so. Um, I also, I don't know that I can reach that one, so I hope you can just see it a little bit well enough. I did post that on Instagram. So that is Victoria's Garden. And the frame, it's a nice, big, thick piece of wood frame. It looked like this. And I ended up sanding whatever this finish is, you know, on there. I just sanded the whole frame lightly with like 220 sandpaper. And then I tried something new. I had purchased this. It's the same thing. It's the decor wax, but it's in this color. Excuse me, uh, white wax, I guess that's what it's called. And I just put a coat of this on top of it. And um, I was really happy with how that came out. I think you can just see the little bit of the corner right here. So that was another one that I was able to reframe. Sorry, I was looking really quickly to see if there were any others, but it looks like those are the, those are the three that I did, four. Those are the four that I did this, this time. Okay, so I guess that's all of the finishes that I have to share with you, right? So let's go ahead and move on. Let me take a quick, oh, I know, okay. So I have the other finishes I have are my, I have a couple of monthly uh, stitch alongs that I'm doing where it's a series and I'm stitching one every month. And so this first one is from the Home for the Holidays, Blackbird Designs. Let me show you this very quickly. And I am stitching the five stockings, one a month, again with my friend Merritt and anyone who wants to join along, this is the hashtag, uh, hashtag BBD Christmas Stocking SAL. And I completed, this not necessarily the first stocking in order, but I completed this one. Um, I did change the alphabet and added my initial. I told you last time that I would try to remember to bring the book, which I did, but it's under a few things here. So this is a really nice, I again, I think this is a difficult book to find. So. I'm not sure that you'll be able to find it, but it's it's a really nice big uh, alphabet book. And I'm going to be taking the alphabet letters from there for the tops of the stockings. I This is my initial, obviously, and then I'll do my husband's and haven't decided if I'm going to put, you know, like joy or hope or love, something a little bit shorter than I might put on the others. Um, I can also put our son's initials and, you know, my mom somehow come up with five. <laughs> That makes sense. But um, I stitched this on 32 count raw natural by Zweigart. And this is where I used the sulky for the very first time. Um, I did discover um, after I'd finished stitching this one, and again, I used the smear and across there, 
But after I stitched this one and I started the next one, which is for February, uh, I, I noticed that I was going to have to pick two colors for this one. So just the one color on the other one, well, obviously three, because I, I did the pink for the K as well. So I had to wait until I, I stitched this on my way to Arizona in the car with my Q-snap, and I was able to do some two-handed stitching. Um, it, it was a little tricky, but I figured out how to sit in the car, so I was able to do that on the way, and then as well, uh, actually, I think I stitched the border on the top of this. That's what I did in the car, I finished that. And then in the hotel, when I wasn't sleeping one of the evenings there, I ended up starting uh, the second stocking. And uh, so then I can't remember the, the, I think this is the one I have to add in, in addition. So it's the sulky and it looks like this might be 712 will be my next color. I took this little, um, just a little pin box with me and these are the colors that I took. So let me see, because I think this would have been the other color that I used so far. And this is, yeah. Oh no, this says 712 as well. Oh, I'll have to see if I gave you the wrong numbers or if they're both the same. No, they don't look the same. So they're different. Let me see if I have a different spot that has another number on there in case you're interested in which colors I used. Mm. Oh, it's on the top. That's right. Okay, that says this is, oh, very small. Okay, let me just show them to you and see if you can see them. I don't have my glasses. Looks like we've got this one. And what is this one? 1035, but I don't see a number on this other one. Hmm. I'll try it, if you're, if you're interested, let me know and I'll try to look them up better. All right, so that was my other finish for January and then uh, my beginning for February. And then the other monthly sale that I'm uh, trying to keep up with is for um, the Prairie Birds by Prairie Schooler. And this is with my friend Amanda, Alba Stitcher. And she decided that she was going to stitch one of these. There are 10, so I think her idea is to stitch one a month. Um, I, there, I'm going to try to do three, three, three. So just the nine out of the 10. And I don't know if this is going to work. I hope so. But what I'm going to do is kind of like extend things. Uh, maybe the leaves. I have to add a little bit something over here. Uh, maybe add some uh, doodads or, you know, a little bit here and there as it, as it goes along so that I can not have such a space in between. And I, like I said, let's just see if this is going to work. But uh, I finished the first two, so January and February. And we'll see how that goes. But this is 32 count flax. And so I did have to use two strands on this. Um, I didn't want them super teeny tiny, so I decided I was just going to have to, and it's just DMC. So um, it's a little more time consuming for me. I have all of my DMC is already cut to the shorter lengths because I usually never ever use one strand. And so I do have to kind of take a little more time to double them up. I can't use the loop start every time. Um, not hard, just a little bit more time consuming. All right, so there's that. I did forget to share with you. I had my husband pick up one of these for me from like Staples or whatever. It's extremely cheap. And this is what I used to um, make the circle for the bottom of my drum so that I could figure out, you know, the distance. Um, so that worked out really well for me to do that. All right, let's see what else I've got going on in my lap here. Um, so that was the Prairie Birds. Oh, let me show you that one. This is the Prairie Birds by Prairie Schooler. And then I did another one of my uh, NYE 12 by 12 starts that I had um, for that fun. That was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed that. But of course, now I have a lot of new starts to, to keep up with. So Quaker sewing tray. I'm not planning on putting it in the actual tray. Um, it's probably just going to get popped in a frame. But I am stitching this on 37 count Wild Honey by uh, Legacy Linens or Access Commodities. And I did change, I changed the birds. They're um, Palomino and I put them in the old blue paint for just a pop of blue. I'm really happy with that. The rest are, no, they're not all the call for colors because I, I, you may remember I had mentioned that I didn't think my sage was significantly different from my Oscar because, you know, it's variegated. So there are portions that are uh, very close. And so I changed over and instead of stitching sage, I stitched it in the DMC color. That is uh, the, the, the 
wherever it shows up, I use the DMC instead of the Sage. So that'll be in certain areas here and there. But the rest of it are all the overdives that are called for. And I think it was 370. Uh, I just did that thread conversion on the 123 website and I, you know, put in Sage and said, please convert this to DMC. And I think that was the color that it gave me. So that, all I have left to do on that is just the top portion. I think uh, this will be a finish uh, the next time I pull it out because I just have, I think just this top portion here. Oh, looks like I, nope, I finished that one. So yeah, so that'll be good. That'll be a finish. So that'll get me a little bit, now I can have some more new starts <laughs> because I'll have some more finishes. All right, so you will remember this last uh, episode, the last time we were together, and I just fell in love with uh, this next one here. So this is, oh, where did you go, Mary? This is Mary uh, Amelia's bird. I'm sorry, I can't seem to find the, I must have forgotten to pull it. Um, by Quaint Rose Needle Arts here on uh, YouTube and also on Instagram. And I did the hashtag for Mary Amelia's Bird Sal. Uh, I just, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Now my friend April has completed um, her and she, I have the clock. I wanna show you how uh, Macy showed it as a finish. Um, I'm stitching on 40 Count Hog Bristle by Fox and Rabbit. And I was able, we popped over to Hobby Lobby after we had dinner with friends the other night. I was like, I was like sweetie, can we run into Hobby Lobby and see if they have my clock? <laughs> like sure so let me show you this is how Macy um, finished it so she just took out she shows you on her last video how um, her husband was able to take the squeeze this portion here I guess and take out the, the clock portion and and she just wrapped it around she puts the stitching piece over the, the glass and this was a really so and if you go to April's Instagram you'll be able to see that's how she finished it so it fits well with the 40 count so I'm excited to uh, hopefully I'll be able to finish her before we're together again next time. But I'm loving, loving, loving stitching her. All right, so let's see if we're ready to move on to new starts, because I think those are all of my current whips that I had going on. Yes, 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 okay, we're good. So let's look at, um, my new start. Okay, so this is one of the charts that I picked up on our trip to the attic. And uh, this is by Priscilla's Pocket. And I had April um, actually sign it for me while I was there. So Isabel Howie, 1795. Yes. And I this is on display there at the attic. And I just, I fell in love. Um, I have stitched H. Faulkner by Priscilla's Pocket. And I own... Mary Allison, I believe it is, which I just haven't managed to start yet. Um, but this is absolutely beautiful. And I, I I was just determined I was gonna start it right away. So I actually purchased um, some of the flosses while I was there and um, then substituted some of the ones uh, that I didn't end up buying. But I got a start on, uh, let's see, 40 count vintage exemplar by Lakeside Linens. And I do have to figure out what pink I'm going to use here. I did change it to, I think it was, the, the pink was um, charted in here and I just ended up using the purple. And that is a um, silk. And I substituted one of the green. So this should be a little bit brighter down here. And mine is going to actually blend up, blend in a little bit more than, but I think it looks fine. I'm really happy with it. So isn't that deer? Like a little purple deer. So beautiful colors. I think that's what, you know, draws me these Scottish samplers and whew, so pretty, so pretty. So that was my new start. Um, and one of the things that I got from the attic. So I feel like we're ready to talk about my trip to the attic now, because I, I think I've showed you everything. Yes, I think I've showed you all of my current uh, whips and everything that's going on. So let's go ahead. So my husband and I took our trip to Arizona and there was more fun food and we went to a couple of antique malls. Um, I was able, we went to a thrift store and I was able to get, my gosh, a, like, I don't know, seven or eight thrifted frames. Um, so I came home with a, a lot of those and that's exciting. Um, but of course, the best part was our trip to the, my trip to the attic. My husband just kind of like said, go do your thing, take as long as you want. And he, uh, 
he went and found other fun things to do. But I got to see my friend Amy, Mrs. Flossie, and um, then of course I got to show Jean that I had finished my um, Clara Hansen. I took that, I actually, let me see if I can find, I took a pit, had Amy take a picture of us really quickly. And so I don't take the best pictures ever, but um, yeah, I was able to show Jean I did my 56 count. So that was so much fun, I uh, really enjoyed that. I, I can tell you again and again, it was so much fun. Um, I just, I met some lovely, lovely women. Uh, I, so Nancy came and said hi. She actually knew I was going to be there. And so she was able to come and I met Nancy and um, I saw Michelle and Anne with an E. I had met them the prior trip to the attic. And so I saw them again. And uh, Anne had, uh, oh my gosh, one of the, Jean would actually walk over and show you, you know, somebody brought in this amazing, is it, is it Anthem's Folly? Antrium's Folly? I, I can't remember. I know Stacey 911 stitcher has showed it and she's stitching it. And she walked over and showed us that. And then Anne had this beautiful uh, piece that she, I don't I remember what it was called, but Jean said like, that's one of the perks, you know, of working <laughs> at the attic and is being able to just uh, enjoy all of this amazing, beautiful needlework. And um, so it was so much fun that I, and I met Jan Hicks. Hi, Jan. Jan uh, was there that day as well. And we um, just kind of chatted on and off during the entire, we were both there for quite a while. And so that was just a lot of fun. And I met Penny. Hi, Penny, who's thinking about starting uh, a Flossu channel. Yes, yes, yes. And let's see, and Margie. And Margie, um, I'm so sorry I didn't get more time to talk with you. If you know, you mentioned that you watch. So if you would leave that comment in the bottom, letting me know who you are so that I can, you know, and if you're on Instagram, make sure I'm following you there. I would love to talk with you a little bit more and hopefully next time. Uh, just thank you again for coming up and saying hi. I really appreciate that. Um, I think that's everybody. I didn't want to forget, so I made a list. And of course, you know, all the lovely women that work there at the attic. Um, it was a fabulous, fabulous day. So let me go ahead and share with you some of the goodies that I came home with. Uh, I did end up getting the rose and the giant pear, and I'm excited to start this. I'm not sure when, but it's definitely something that, uh, soon. Um, I also got a couple of charts by the Traveling Stitcher. And you know, one of the beautiful things about being able to go and see these models on the wall is that, you know, that is exactly what draws you in is being able to see them on the wall. So M.A. Badger, 1870. And this is stitched up there. And as well as another Traveling Stitcher, Carolyn Baird, 1843. Isn't that beautiful? So traveling stitcher. Oh, so those were the, the three charts that I got. And then I got some fabric. So let me go ahead and share that with you. Let me move a few things over here so I can get to them. All right, so this is uh, one of April's favorite fabrics, um, Duxbury by Fox and Rabbit. So let me see the best way I can hold these up. I have them all in a pile here. And I don't know what I'm gonna stitch on really any of these, but you know, it's always a nice opportunity to get fabric. But this is the Duxbury, which is that very, um, I don't know, splotchy, grungy. And I got, I believe I got 40 count in all of these. I might have gotten 36, but I think I got 40 and everything. So that's the Duxbury. And then this one is wheat by Fiber on a Whim. Again, this is 40 count. It's got some green splotchy modeling in there on the gold. Really pretty. So there's that. Then we have Paper Bark. Again, 40 count by Fox and Rabbit. It's a little bit yellowy. Yeah. Not quite as modeled on this one. Beautiful um, neutral for a sampler. Like a yellowy green, has a green uh, hint to it, I'd say. And then another fiber on the whim, fiber on a whim, earth, which I don't know, it's a little bit like oaken and ale. Again, with a little bit of the splotches of green. I, don't, I like green, so obviously. So yeah, again, I have no idea. Oh, one more. I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch on these. That's the fun of being able to just add a little bit to your stash every time you go. And again, this is Fox and Rabbit 
fossil. So pretty. So pretty. If you guys have ideas about, you know, things you would stitch or have stitched on these, let me know. Okay, so I think that is all of the charts, all of the fabric, all of the stitching. We do have another uh, new sal that we're um, going to start here on February 19th, I think it is. That's a Saturday. And so when I say we, I mean uh, Merit and April and Celeste and anyone who wants to join. And we're going to stitch the, the from the Sewing Club book, we're going to stitch tiny tree top, tree tops. We're going to start it uh, all together. And April had the brilliant idea where she's just going to stitch this portion here. She's not doing the border. And you know that that rings true for me. <laughs> so I love that idea. She's going to make another drum. So um, February 19th, we're going to start this if you want to start it with us. That would be so much fun. I think we're going to do the hashtag, um, hashtag BBD Tiny Tree Tops, S-A-L. That should be easy to remember. So... Okay, is that everything? I think that's everything. I should take another quick peek. Make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, I there is one. Uh, someone had asked me a while ago, and I'm so sorry I forgot to get back to you. Um, I, this is how I cut my foam core. Is just a, you know, um, I can change the blade as it gets dull. And I use my um, quilter's mat. Is it Ulfa? Um, I'm not a, you know, I use it for everything. I, it does end up, it's not, it's a little bit, um, going to leave some grooves. So again, you know, um, maybe if it's something you want to cut a lot of your own foam core, maybe just have a mat designated for that. Um, but that's what I use along with just the, uh, quilters ruler. This works uh, as a nice edge for me to, uh, to put that on my foam core. And then I can make a couple of, um, you know, uh, passes with the blade and it cuts it perfectly. I don't have any issues with it. Well, you can see this is my foam core that I've cut um, with the knife. So it works out really well for me. Uh, make sure there's nothing else I wanted to share or any other questions that I had. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. So, okay. Um, I do have a fun uh, little trip coming up. And so if everything goes according to plan, I will be able to tell you all about that the next time we are together. Uh, I am, as always, going to share some scripture, and I hope you'll stay, but that's all the stitching. So take care, enjoy all of your stitching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay, so for those of you who are staying with me, uh, today I'm going to read Psalm 139, and I'm going to read from 1 to 18. Um, I, this is the NIV version. I often, I only read from the Bible, and I often read like the New King James Version, and sometimes the NIV, or, and I always try to let you know what it is that I read from. So Psalm 139, 1 through 18. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. 
When I wake, awake, I am still with you.